a quite inspiring scene here at this great new look stadium as Owen Doyle signals the kickoff and Howell Davis, the new Welsh fullback, kicks it dead. John Rutherford will take the drop first dropout of the match. Drifting it back, Ian Paxson got hands to it. Colin Deans kicked it on. Ian Paxson was in front of him, but the referee had seen uh, the ball knocked forward initially. So the first scrimmage there, just outside Scotland's 22. You may see that the ground will cut up a little because, as I was saying, it's a little softer than Bill Hardiman would have wanted it. Simply because of the covers. But when you consider all the building, contractual work that's been going on here, the stadium and the pitch looks marvellous. Mark Douglas waiting as the Welsh scrimmage holds. Gacy testing out Peter Dodge with that Gary Owen. Dodge ready and alert for the occasion, calls for the mark. So that's Malcolm Dacey of Swansea. And Peter Dodge, you remember, who kicked those uh, vital five penalty goals against the All Blacks. From the way the ball flighted there, you'll notice that Scotland and Peter Dodge playing into the slight breeze blowing down the pitch. Rhys Morgan at the front, John Perkins of Pontypool just behind him. But Deans throws for Tomes. Laidlaw, out to Leslie. Leslie driving on into Malcolm Dacey. That's a good search by the Scottish forwards. Laidlaw out to Rutherford, along the line to Kennedy. Kennedy beautifully tackled, but it's kicked on by Rutherford. Howell Davis got a very nasty bounce. He was unlucky. It came squirting off the turf. But it was a knock-on. Bit slow the heel, but it's coming down two, and it's come to Butler. Now it's Douglas, and that's found a bit of space. Back goes Steve Munro. Steve Munro, who played his last international against the Romanians in 1981 and a bit of trouble with hamstring couldn't play against New Zealand with 10 minutes to go to half time still no scoring and Wales trying to go out the tail of the line out to Perkins and it's a penalty to Wales it may have been for uh, preventing release but I'm sure Eddie Butler will want the kick at goal it really is uh, quite a burden for a new internationalist to have to take on the goal kicking as well because goal kicking so important and certainly a principal goal kicker for his club bridge end so how will davis then got the height that time and it's through the uh, howell davis must be delighted because he's taken a bit of a heavy knock early on and uh, hasn't had many opportunities to run into the line which is his strength must be delighted to have converted that penalty shot. Deans of that marvellous long throw again to Leslie. Jim Calder takes it. Pick up and drive by Ian Paxton. That really was another good drive, a chance for Rutherford. Rutherford with that check as he did two years ago. Rutherford going for the corner. Rutherford checks inside to Calder. Calder a metre short. Laidlaw once again thwarted. Yes, it was Malcolm Dacey who got a hand on the ball. And that was a clever bit of work by Dacey in amongst the forwards. Although that was lovely running by John Rutherford, credit must go to David Leslie, who's won a number of line-out balls at the back of the line against Moriarty, who must be at least four or five inches taller than him. Scotland going for an eight-manner. And it's a free kick for delaying, I think, the put-in. Real chance here for the Scots. What kind of move will they produce here? Roy Laidlaw out to Rutherford. Rutherford hands on to Milne. Again, nicely laid in the ruck. Laidlaw, the switch to Rutherford, the drop goal surely. And hooked.
Scotland down again to two. It's David Leslie pointing to Eddie Butler, who uh, really uh, isn't allowed to stand at the back there because Wales had three men in the line and uh, Scotland had just two. So the rule is now, of course, that the throwing inside dictate the number of players who will be in the line. And as Scotland had two, Wales could only have two as well. Otherwise, they've got to be 10 metres back. So Scotland going for the short one as Colin Deans takes it. Now it's fed out to Rutherford. Rutherford checking back inside on the Welsh 22. A great try here for Ian Paxton. David Leslie gave the scoring pass and Scotland have gone into the lead with a really brilliant try. Yeah, so watch the ploy now. It's Colin Deans who acts as the dummy, holds the ball, quick release to John Rutherford, really which set it up. He's not tackled and tremendous support from the back row. Paxton obviously did the rest. Ian Paxton's first try for Scotland in an international puts them one point in the lead. And Peter Dodge here can stretch it. Dodge then stroked it well, and it's there. And Peter Dodge hoists his 50 points in major internationals for Scotland. Well, watch this. It's a beautifully conceived move. It's the quick release here to John Rutherford, which sets it up. One can argue he should have been tackled, but he still holds on to the ball. David Leslie up in support, and Paxton, like a good number eight, carrying on the support as well on the try that Scotland needed on half-time. And a great buzz of excitement all around this ground as we get ready to start the second half. That... Uh, Try by Scotland so close to the interval really has quietened things down a bit here, but uh, this is going to be some game. Butler couldn't quite hold it, and Laidlaw goes on one of his sniping runs, and he's away! Roy Laidlaw out there to Paxton. The pass just a little bit anxious, and uh, that really was another chance for Scotland. The break by Laidlaw, everybody's expected. Yes, a classic scrum half snipe, wasn't it? Look, he's determined all the way. He obviously thinks that he's got to get the pass in because he's going to be tackle, tackled and was just a little bit too quick with it, which would have resulted in a tremendous try. It was Davis with a very high one up to Peter Dodds. And Dodds coming away across to the far touch line. Now he tends sometimes to... Uh, of little moments when he gets crushed in the mincing machine, but uh, he got it away in time there. Went too far, of course, because it was outside the 22 and lost the territorial advantage. Good knock down there by Pickering, out to Dacey, along the line to Ackerman, Ackerman to Bowen, Bowen sprinting through, oh, lovely run by Hadley, Adrian Hadley, taken on by the fullback, Davies. That was lovely work by the Welsh backs, and it almost produced a try on the wrong wing for the big Cardiff man, Adrian Hadley. So Wales once again as close as that. Pick up by Butler to Douglas. Douglas half through, back inside to Titley. A brilliant try. Mark Titley's first try for Wales in a major international, and Wales in the lead. It's the back row move here. Watch how Mark Douglas moves out. Eddie Butler feeds him, and really it's the case of the missed tackle, isn't it? Mark Douglas does well to keep it going, and Wales are back in the match. Oh, it's a beauty. Jim Calder is going to curse himself here because it's a missed tackle as far as he's concerned. Look how he's standing out on the outside there. The pass beats him, but credit to Mark Douglas for carrying the movement on. He is a strong boy, took his chance well, and Wales have got the score they wanted. So it's up to Scotland now with John Brotherford there, just waiting service. Laidlaw. 
Referee's whistle had gone for the penalty, playing the man. Or perhaps may have got a foot in front of the ball when it was still in the scrummage. But uh, here's a big moment for Peter Dodds because uh, if he can kick this distance and dead straight, then the sides are level. Dodds then. It's certainly high enough. Has it got the legs? Yes, it has. The kind of kick he put over five times against the All Blacks and the Scots here are delirious. So it's a itsy pixie nine points all with 23 minutes of the second half gone. Alan Combs at number two, Cuthbertson at four. It's Scotland's throw to Leslie. Brilliant again to Calder. Calder on to Paxton. Paxton to Cuthbertson. Almost up to the Welsh 22. Brilliant Scottish forward play. Laid low to Rutherford. Rutherford to chip through. It was Roger Baird who almost got his foot to the ball, still in there, as Rutherford chipped it towards the corner. Dean's in as well. Rutherford in complete control of this situation and uh, no doubt enjoying every moment. James again disguising the throw cleverly, but it's Milne who charges. Again, Laidlaw, Laidlaw dummies. Held up there by Titley, the wing. And it's Jim Aitken who scored. The Scots are in the lead, and the Scottish captain has put them ahead. Scottish flags float in the air, and... Uh, well, a proud moment once again for Jim Aitken. Look how uh, Laidlaw has a cut, and it can't quite get the strength or the power to get over the Welsh line, but credit to him, he sets it back up again, and that is really what made the try for Aitken. He had the size and the power to get over the Welsh line, and could this be the decisive score? Peter Dodds with this vital conversion kick now because it'll put Scotland six points clear. He stroked it with, as they say in Scotland, ne bother ever. 15 points to nine, Scotland lead two tries to one. And Wales desperately seeking a try close enough to kick the goal. Throw in not quite to the referee's liking. Scotland with another scrummage. Now Wales pinched one against the head not so long ago. And it was ugly again. Daisy going, but the referee deciding it went straight through. Everybody biting their fingers down right to the ends here in the stadium, Welsh and Scots alike. Better heel by Scotland. Laidlaw was just a bit afraid of giving a pass that might have caused more embarrassment to the Scots. Well, we've played a minute and a half of injury time. It's worth noting how Calder stands off from the scrimmage. I wonder if Wales will try and get a pushover try. Jim Calder guarding that blind side as Butler goes to Douglas. He lost possession. But it'll it'll still be the referee's whistle is gone. And Scotland have won a remarkable victory. 15 points to nine their margin. And they've set a bit of history for themselves. And for their captain Jim Aitken, because he's led Scotland now in three internationals. And he's had a win over England, a draw against the All Blacks, and a win against Wales at Cardiff.